Hi, my name is Sam Dhanishekaran and uh, welcome to this Oracle Database Lessons video series. In this video, let us take a look into installing Oracle 12 in Windows 10. So go to oracle.com and go to downloads. Okay, click Oracle, download Oracle Database Tool C now. Okay, I'm going to download uh, this one which is Microsoft Windows 64-bit release 12.1.02 accept the license agreement and then click this one again accept the license agreement and click this okay, if you haven't registered you would like to register here Okay, and uh, that would uh, download the zip file. Okay, since uh, it has been downloaded, let me go and download the next file. Okay, it's downloading the next one. Okay, I've downloaded both the files. They are of compressed format, so we need to uncompress them. So, just do a right click on the file one of two and choose extract all and it will prompt you a location where you need to extract those files okay and i'm going to this is very important i'm going to extract both the files into same location so i don't want this one of two or those things i'm just going to extract them to win x64 12102 so the extraction of first file is complete so let me extract the second one right click extract all important thing is it has to be extracted in the same location as the first one okay it's extracting so we have extracted both the files in this location which is winx64 underscore 12102 let's go to that location and go go inside there will be a folder called database and let's open that and there is a file called uh, setup.exe let's run it this is this will invoke the installer okay it's starting oracle universal installer you will briefly see this command window the first option is to configure security updates uh, this is the screen where you will give your email address or if you already have subscribed oracle support you would give the username and, and password so that you will receive uh, information about security patches and updates okay so i'm going to skip this click next and it's going to complain about that this is basically for educational purpose right so we can skip it okay so in the next screen we are presented with three options one is create and configure a database the next one is install database software only the third one is upgrade an existing database let me begin with the second one install database software only what this means is it will install just the database software and it will do nothing after that meaning that um, if you want to install just the software and create the database later we can choose this option even if we do this at some point of time when we are ready to create a database we can do that by invoking dbca which is database configuration assistant which will be part of this database software okay and this first option which is create and configure a database is nothing but the second option plus that dbca which i just mentioned basically it will install the software and invoke dbca for us to create a database 
The third one is to upgrade an existing database. If you already have a database and we, if we want to upgrade that, then we use this option. Click next. Okay, let me go back and I have chosen create and configure a database, meaning that I want to install the database software as well as I want to create a database. Click next. So in this screen, we are presented with two options. One is, uh, do we want to choose desktop class configuration parameters or server class configuration parameters? Since this is for educational purpose and I'm installing Oracle in a Windows desktop, I'm going to choose desktop class. Okay, so in this screen, uh, it's asking uh, when Oracle runs, um, who should be the owner of that process. So in a multi-user operating system like Windows or Unix, Linux, any process that's running or any software that has been installed has to be owned by some user, first of all. And when it runs, that instance of that software which is running in the memory has again has to be owned by some user. Okay, so here Oracle uh, is asking, do you want to run the Oracle process as an in, uh, as an existing Windows user? Okay, if yes, give the Windows username and password. So whenever Oracle runs, it will run as this user. Or do you want to create a new Windows user for it? Okay, I'm going to go with the old method, which is just use Windows built-in account as I'm using this only for educational purpose. But definitely Oracle is going to complain about that. Okay, I'm still going to continue with that. In this screen, we need to choose various options and let me explain one by one. Oracle Base. Oracle Base is a folder which serves as, the, as a base for any Oracle software installation in this mission. Okay, by default, it would be C colon slash app slash SAM in this Windows box. The term SAM comes from the name of the OS user. Okay, so in this Windows box, which is my Windows desktop, I have a OS user called SAM and I logged in using that user. So by default, it gives me an option C colon slash app slash the OS user, which would be SAM. Okay. And that serves as a Oracle base. Next is the software location. Remember, I'm installing database. Okay. The software for the database goes into Oracle base, which is C colon slash app slash SAM slash product slash 12.1.0 slash db home underscore one. So C colon app SAM is the Oracle base and then beneath that it creates a folder called product and then the version 12.1.0 and then database home underscore one, the first home, meaning that I can install uh, same software in another home also. Okay, so next is the database file location. Remember, we are creating a database, right? So the data files have to go somewhere. Obviously, it will go uh, into a folder called Aura Data under Oracle Base. C colon slash app slash SAM, which is Oracle Base, and then slash Aura Data. And choose, leave the default value for this database edition, enterprise edition, and uh, character set. I'm going to change it to Unicode. You can keep it whatever you want because this is just going to be a, a training system. And the global database name, I'm going to keep it just demodb.home. Okay. And I'm going to give a three character password. And I'm sure it's going to complain about the password. Okay, and this option create as a container database that's a Oracle 12C feature about multi tenant container databases, which we will talk in one of the subsequent videos. Okay, as of now, I'm going to leave it to the default. Okay, click next. Okay, it's going to complain about the password. Okay, 
So right now it's doing prerequisite checks. Okay, so we are presented with this summary screen and uh, everything looks fine. So I'm going to click install. So once that completes, it will start the creation of database and you will get a screen like this. So after a while, once it is done, it's going to uh, give an output like this saying that the database has been configured and uh, it will also give a URL where the database's enterprise manager database express location will be there. We will talk about this later. Okay, so click OK and we are done. Okay, so now let's connect to it. Okay, go to the run menu in start and then type CMD to get to the command prompt. Now set Oracle SID equals to demo DB to make sure if it has if if it has been set properly just do a echo percentage oracle set it has been set to demo db okay set the oracle home to this one where we installed the oracle database software and let's just make sure the value has been set properly okay now do this equal plus slash no log connect slash as sysdba we are connected select name from v dollar database we are in okay so that's how you install oracle database in windows 10